if my people who are called by my name will what? Will humble themselves and pray. Then he will hear from heaven and he will heal our land. Folks, that's the only hope for the world, not just the United States of America. That's the only hope for the world. So would you commit to and continue to pray that God would heal the broken, that he would bring unity, and that he would do so through his mighty hand and through the love of his children. That's our purpose. If ever there is a time, it's now. So I appreciate what Wayne shared this morning. In fact, Wayne, you kind of took the first three minutes of my message. Thank you very much. No, I'm joking. It was great. I love it. The legal separation of the 13 colonies from Great Britain occurred in July 2nd, 1776. The Second Continental Congress voted to approve a resolution of independence. Then they turned to the work of the Declaration of Independence. Not just a resolution, the Declaration. I don't know if you've ever taken time to read the Declaration of Independence, but it's powerful. It's powerful. It's a document explaining thoroughly the reason for the decision of the Second Continental Congress to completely sever its relationship, its ties, its dependence upon the rule of King George III and the Parliament of Great, Brit Brit Great Britain. The declaration was prepared by a committee of five. Thomas Jefferson was the principal author, and Congress debated in those two days, and they revised the declaration until finally approving and adopting it on July 4th, 1776. It's interesting. John Adams had written to his wife Abigail on the 3rd of July that the 2nd of July would go down in history as the monumental moment in the history of this nation. He said celebrations would be held, proclamations will be held, there will be always the remembrance of what happened on this day, the 2nd of July. He missed it by two days. Because throughout time history, our nation has celebrated on the 4th of July, the day that the Declaration, not just the Resolution, but the Declaration of Independence was adopted. There's been some arguments between scholars of whether or not the Declaration was signed on the 4th of July, and, and most agree it was probably signed on the 2nd of August. But I don't know about you, but somehow the 2nd of August and the 4th of July just don't roll off the tongue the same. You know, so it was on the 4th without question that it was adopted, it was accepted, it was approved by the Second Continental Congress. And today we celebrate our nation's independence, the birth of our nation and our nation's freedom that was declared on that day. The hope of freedom fills our history, it thrills our souls, and it unites us in a common cause in this uncommon country. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Our founding fathers came from a very religiously oppressive environment. Repressive. The, the, the Great Britain, it wasn't good. Now, the men that signed that declaration were men of different religious outlooks, but they had a burning desire to live in a nation where they were free to worship God as they saw fit. And many of our nation's most important documents are framed around their love of God. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. One nation under God, indivisible. But understand, one nation, not alongside of, but under God. And as much as we might wish it were otherwise, most of us would have and the truths and the principles it was founded upon is not the same as it was to The lines have gotten blurred and the principles that guided our founding fathers in many instances have either been forgotten or have been ignored. History proves that whenever mankind is left to their own devices long enough, things will start to go sour. And our country is just one example of that. It's only a couple hundred years old. Yet here we are seemingly drifting slowly back toward this religious, repressive past that this country was started to avoid. Except now it's being pressed on our citizens, not the freedom of religion, 
but the freedom from religion. When we read in the Old Testament, especially the books that tell of the history of God's people, we see the same thing happen. People grew so full of themselves that they didn't have room for God. They either forgot about him or they chose to ignore him. The New Testament, when we are introduced to Jesus and we see the church established in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, it's still alive, including us today. And yet history has shown example after example of of nations, of churches that were once on fire full of the Spirit of God that let the flame of their love for God grow dim and finally flicker out. And that seems to be what we see going on in our country today. Friends, this isn't going to end. That's going to always happen as long as man is trying to be in charge. If the world as we know it ends tomorrow or 500 years from now or 10,000 years from now, people will still be struggling to keep from coming under the will of God. We don't want someone else telling us what to do. And even if the Lord tarries for, for five years, 50 years, 500 years, 5,000 years, you will still find people that are faithfully waiting for Jesus, that are faithfully following, and you're going to find just as many, if not many more, that are going to still dislike or even despise those who submit, those who willingly choose to follow the lordship of Jesus Christ. Well, why is this? Why are people confused and, and want to get away from God? And a lot of them aren't even confused. They just, it's total denial, total rejection. Why is this? I think there's an answer. I think it's because people are confused about what freedom really is. And in many cases, they've forgotten what freedom is. The world defines freedom as the license or ability to do whatever we want, whenever we want, wherever we want. In other words, it's all about me. Okay? Don't try to infringe on what I want. That's the world's understanding of freedom. But God, on the other hand, says freedom is the license or ability to do whatever is right. And there's a difference. In fact, there's a great bit of difference. Many think freedom is like jumping off a tall building without a parachute. For a few moments, the adrenaline rush that courses through your body is amazing, but pretty soon you see the pavement coming your way and that races to confront us with a reality that cannot be avoided. No one has the ability or the freedom to break the law of gravity. I can sit over here on this keyboard and I compound each and every key, but without an understanding of music theory and the discipline of practicing to free myself to play the piano, all I'm doing is making noise. But true freedom is the power to create a melody within the laws of music. Freedom is so much more than the license or the right to do whatever we want. Somebody once complimented a renowned violinist, said, I'd give half my life to play like you do. And the famous violinist replied just immediately, I have. In the Garden of Eden, when life was about Adam and Eve and God, it was just the three of them in relationship. Freedom was something that Adam and Eve dealt with pretty well with until the enemy of our soul entered the garden and offered up another option. It's not about God, it's all about you. He just doesn't want you to be like him. And temptation found its way into our world. Sin entered. And sin takes away our freedom and it brings chains instead. That's what it does. The world's definition of freedom will not work because our sin nature causes us to, us, us, us to want that which would destroy us. One preacher used to call sin the bait on the fish hook. You taste the treat, but you get caught up, hung up on a sharp steel trap. You're sitting there thinking, well, thanks, Andy. This is really nice, happy thoughts and images as we celebrate the last day of this Independence Day weekend. You're just like life of the party, aren't you? I hope so. There's some good news. Though we will never be free if we try to keep or hold to the world standards, there is hope. 
There is freedom from the chain of sin that's available to us, and we don't even have to discover a new nation to find it. Jesus had something to say about this subject, so encourage you, open your Bibles, 8th chapter of the Gospel of John, and we're going to start with verse 31 today. We looked at this chapter a few months ago as we, we looked at the woman that was brought before Jesus, cast at his feet, and they said, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery. The law says she should be stoned. What do you say? And they were trying to trap him. They were trying to trick him. They were trying to, to, to make the people upset with Jesus when he said, well, the law says this, but that's not compassionate, Jesus. So they were trying to trap him, and Jesus just throws it around on him. He's like, you're right. That is not what the law says, so let you who is without sin throw the first stone. And we remember what happened. One by one, they dropped their rocks, and they walked away. Jesus was brilliant. He was, yes, absolutely brilliant. But as we read on in the chapter, we find people listening and learning, and they come to believe in and follow Jesus' teaching on how we're to draw near to God. And that's where we're going to pick up this morning in verse 31. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. These are powerful words. If you hold my teaching, you are my disciples, my students, you will know the truth. The truth will set you free. Please, in a world that doesn't recognize truth if it hits us in the face, hear these words of Jesus. Believe in me, listen to me, hold to me, and put into practice what I say, and you will know the truth, and you will be set free. This is huge. This is bigger than any king. This is bigger than any dictator, president, parliament, congress, or any other governing authority and what they can do because Jesus' words are eternal. And people miss the point then and many still do. And that's why we have the problems we see in our world today. And so we look at the response of the believers that day in verse 33. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say we shall be set free? (laughs) they have short memories. Like the religious leaders of their time, they were a bit confused about what freedom really was. And the response to Jesus shows us this. We're Abraham's children. We're his inheritance. We're his legacy. We've never been slaves. I'm thinking, okay, what was going on in Egypt? Um, Okay, what was happening in Babylon? Okay, what's going on right now with Rome? They didn't understand what freedom was. And too often, we're guilty of the same thing. But Jesus makes it really clear. I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Jesus uses the word everyone here to include those who chose to go against God's principles and commands. And he chooses it to include those who think, I keep it pretty closely, so I'm above the law. No, you're not. No, you're not. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. In his letter to the church in Rome, Paul clarifies it a bit more. All have sinned and fall short of God's glory. Romans 3.23, even worse, in Romans 6.23, the wages of sin, the consequence of sin is death. This isn't literally lifeless bodies. This is separation from God for eternity. But again, hang on, there's good news because Jesus then continues in verse 35 of John 8. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Good news. John 1, 12, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. In Galatians 4, 4 4-5, Paul wrote, but when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that he might redeem those who were under the law, redeem, pay the price of, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And remember that statement in Romans 6, 23 about the wages, the consequence of sin is death? Let's look at the rest of the verse. 
For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So truly, God has set you free. You are free indeed. That's good news. That's really good news. Jesus brought true freedom. He brought freedom from guilt because he never sinned. He brought freedom from the demands of the law because he perfectly obeyed the law. He brought freedom from punishment for he took the pain upon himself. He brought freedom from death for he won the victory over the grave. He brought freedom from sin's power for he broke the power of sin. He brought freedom from Satan's terror. He crushed the enemy. He brought freedom from fear for he brings us into his father's family. And like I said earlier, God's got this. He's got his children. We do not have to be afraid. So if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. So friends, no matter what happens in our world tomorrow or for that matter what happens in our beloved United States in the days and the years to come, we are free indeed. We are free indeed. Our freedom, not the license to do what we want, but the ability to do what is right was purchased and paid more for by the Son of God over 2,000 years ago. We need to remember that. Because sometimes I think we forget what freedom is. At a farmer's market in a little village, there was a covey of quail and it was walking in circles around the pole. There were strings attached to their legs and they continued to walk around and around that pole hour after hour. A man came to the market and he said, how much will you take for all of the quail? And so the owner thought, oh, my lucky day. And he named a price and, and the, the, owner, the man said, okay, I'll pay it. Paid him the money. Okay, they're your quail. And as the, the man that had just bought these quail he reached down and he started cutting the strings off of each of those quail. And the man that had sold them said, what are you doing? And the, own, the new owner said, I'm setting them free. But here's the struggle. In spite of the strings being cut, giving them their freedom, the quail continued to walk around the pole in the same old circle. They didn't even realize that they were free and they could go in, in a different direction, in any direction they wanted to. Friends, if the Son has set you free, you are free indeed. So stop living like the chains are still on us. Let's stop living like the chains of the sin that is in our life will destroy and separate us from our Heavenly Father because the promise of Christ, the promise of the cross, is enough. It's done, it is finished. You are free. You are free indeed. And my friends, that is worth celebrating. Not just once a year, but every day. That's reason to get up every morning. No longer a slave to fear, a child of God. Free in deed he broke the chains so let it go so that you can walk toward him love him serve him until the day he comes again or until the day we come home to him Father, I ask you that you would help us to understand what an incredible, profound, simple truth these words from the Gospel of John are. Help us to see the ways that we in our life, Father, are, are limiting ourselves because we're living like chains are still attached to us. But Father, you broke them. You removed them once and for all by your sacrifice on the cross. You paid the price that only you could pay. God, as we celebrate this Independence Weekend, as we celebrate 
the independence, the freedom that we enjoy as citizens of this country. Lord, help us to see that it's not the ability to do whatever we want whenever we want that's most important. It's the ability and the desire to do what is right. And that will only happen when we are following you. Father, I pray that you'd help us to understand that as we celebrate our independence as a nation, as a citizen of the kingdom of God, we celebrate our dependence upon you. God, help us to go forth and live in such a way that people that are lost in darkness, people who are still chained and caught up in the things of this world, that they will see the difference that you've made, that we have been freed, and not only have we been freed, continuing to walk in the same circle, but Father, we are marching daily toward you. And God, may they begin to see that, and may they ask and desire how they too can be freed from the chains of this world so that they can be free, free indeed. Lord, this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, if you're here today and you are wondering, have those bonds been broken on me? I just want to encourage you we see example after example after example in the New Testament book, Acts of the Apostles, when the church of Jesus was established. Even on the first day that's recorded in that, that book, the second chapter, Peter adds and tells them about Jesus and what he did. And the people are like, well, what must we do to be saved? They knew they were caught in the bonds of sin and they needed something more. And Peter said, repent. Be sorry for that which has separated from you from God. Be baptized, walk, live, follow him. Friends, you and I cannot save ourselves. Only Jesus can do that. But if you are sitting here and you're feeling like I'm still caught up in the bonds of sin, let's talk about what God's word says how you can be free, free indeed. If you're truly one of my students, one of my disciples, believe in him. Be sorry for that which separates you. If your sin's washed away, come out of that water a new creation. And then each and every moment of every day, live in freedom, depending on the one who gave himself so that we can be free for eternity. Come and grab me, talk to me. Let's pray about it. Let's talk about it. I'd love that. I mean, that's more important than anything else. That's better than any firecracker or fireworks display, any food or anything else. Please, don't miss the ability to be free indeed. Thank you for your presence this morning. Thank you for your faithfulness, your following him. And let's go forth and live in such a way that people can see him in us. Amen? Amen. Oh, we can do better than that. I know that. Amen? Amen. God bless. Have an amazing day.